God, I, I, I don't know what I think until I say it generally. Um, <laughs> um, does anyone like cheap meat? In fact, once the universe has been fully explored and it has been established that there are no more butchers to be found, it will be number one on the list of the universe's most expensive butchers. And behind the counter is a sign, one of those pithy, mass-produced signs that spits out an aphorism intended to make everything okay. There will always be someone who is prepared to pay less for something inferior. The underlying message being, there are those people who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Every contributor was paid five dollars. This is what happens when you commoditize content. It's okay. It's possible. You know, what I need is a pithy phrase to help make this point. Yeah, I, I mean, I come from the school of you would say that, wouldn't you, John? Um, but that video cost me $65 to make. Um, and each of those individual bits was sourced from Fiverr.com, uh, double R. Uh, the voiceover artists were paid $5, the animators were paid $5, uh, the models who posed to hold signs with things written on them uh, were paid their share of the $5. So I think you know, nobody was ripped off in the production of that. Um, but I, I, I kind of come from the... Um, I, I help run a production group, and I'll, I'll try and talk very quickly about them in a minute. Um, but if you want to do content, don't. Don't. If you want advertising, because advertising works, buy it. There's a model. There's a very well-established, proven model for the success of advertising. Um, Oh, but hang on. Um, everything has changed. Um, so there are two ecosystems at play here. There's an advertising ecosystem and there's a content ecosystem. And they're kind of merging into each other, but they play by different rules. And I've learned this. Um, agencies are process driven. and television production groups are cowboys who make things up as they go along and deliver just in time. An agency is a client research focused business that feeds back on every stage of the process to make sure they're heading in the right direction. And it's genuinely even before they've set off, worked out where they're going to go. A television production company is a bunch of arseholes who say what they think and fire anyone who doesn't agree with them. Oh, and, it, and it's slightly more complicated as well because there are other people involved. If I'm supplying programs to Jason, and we do, we, we supply quite a few programs to Jason, um, it's just the two of us, and the producer and the commissioning editor, editor will connive in a small room about the program they want to make. In this new content world, there's the agency and the client who interfere with that relationship between the producer and the broadcaster. And then there's this, is it content or is it advertising fine line? And, and I'm not the arbiter of, of, of that information. There's this place called Ofcom. 
Uh, I've nearly been to television prison three times and was taken to the gates once, but I've never been let in. Um, the broadcaster's in charge. So if you're going to do content, and I'm going to concentrate on the broadcast element or the short form digital element of content, the film bit that Don mentioned, you need to collaborate early. And God, those two look the same, but they're not, they're different. Television production companies are not like ad production companies. And I've, again, fallen out over that slide a lot of times where I've been told by advertising agencies to get my fucking story straight and do as I'm fucking told and deliver the fucking film uh, that I've been employed to make. Um, I don't know if you, that sounds familiar at all or, 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 or any of you have actually ever said that to me. Um, <laughs> the person who usually says that to us is the broadcaster. But then we're not a television production company. We're a content owning company. Um, we have 24 production companies around the world. Um, we're about 23% of Channel 4's output. We're about 13% of all UK output. We're about 17% of German output, 14% of Dutch. We are the industry in New Zealand. Um, we make things like Gogglebox, Undercover Boss, Wolf Hall, um, Call the Midwife, George Gently, Midsummer Murders, Gadget Show, Fifth Gear, Peep Show. Look Good Naked, The Cube, The Reflex, Embarrassing Bodies, Look Good Naked, um, Stand Up to Cancer. When we put a business model around making some content, I'm fully aware that what gets measured gets made. But we only get to make things if people watch it and then watch it again. And then I've seen some figures banded around today and we have a digital production group. They manage somewhere in the region of a quarter of a billion views a month. And we manage the content for Sky. We manage the content for ITV, as well as managing all our own content online. We don't pay anybody to watch our content. They choose to watch it. Gogglebox, I think, is the greatest advert for television. It's a program of people watching people watching television or it's a program of people loving people watching people loving television. Um, I'm perhaps repeating something that I've heard from other, pre other presenters this evening. I think it's very important when you set out and you've decided to ignore everything I've said about not getting into content to decide what success looks like. And I caution this because I've been told a lot of times <sighs> that didn't work, did it? <coughs> But what we didn't do was establish what success should look like. Do you want eyeballs? Well, we can make things that will be seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Gogglebox is on in 69 countries at the moment. Midsummer Murders is distributed to every single television market in the world and is sold out, all 19 series. Do you want to provide something that's a media focal point? I helped develop Red Bull Air Race. I did all the initial testings. What would Red Bull do in this case? They create an event, they then create media around the event, they then take people to watch the event, they then broadcast the event, and then they then take out media to tell people to watch the broadcast of the event. They stop all their marketing about their brand and make all their marketing about their content. There was a point made earlier about activation. Or if you've got a specific business objective. We heard David George talk about actually brand shift was the specific date, uh, business objective. Content's pretty good at re-establishing a relationship with your consumers. We're pretty good at establishing a relationship with our, with our audience. Over 150,000 people enter the Gadget Show competition every week. The Gadget Show live exhibition started with three halls and made money in year one. In year two, it expanded to five halls at the NEC over five days. It sold out if you want to go next April. And I think... You also probably, on content, have to reinvent your processes. David George was my client when I launched Audi Channel. We've already established that no one from BBH is in the room. It was my idea. I did it. <laughs> um, one of the greatest pieces of work that BBH did was the management of the client on that. Audi was traditionally used to launching one, two, 30-second, 60-second commercials a year. 
we were producing six hours of content a week. You would go mad if you leveled the same amount of scrutiny to that. So the work that content does is different. The processes you need for content are different. So I've done a little bit of what that process looks like. And again, I think um, stealing some of Don's phrase here, distribution is perhaps the most important. But collaboration is probably the biggest word on here. And you need to, for me, as part of the creative process, you need to identify a client who content is right for and a project that content is right for. And identify the idea that's right for that client and that brand. But then you also need to establish a production partner and a production partner who has a relationship with a platform. So my number one client at the moment are the platforms. When you're briefing platforms, the platforms come to me. I have production companies who make things like Guy Martin or The Gadget Show, but also who make programs with Gordon Ramsay, Heston Blumenthal, or, or make programs around health, comedy, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to collaborate with the producer. I don't think there's content specialists because a sports specialist is different from someone who makes cooking shows. There are genre specialists. Content is an acquired taste. It is not right for everybody, but I, I do believe when it works, it works really well. It, I'm called Apollo 20, I'm allowed a joke. Thank you.